welcome to the Jurassic Park podcast. My name is Ben from Jurassic Site B and I'm here to bring you an interview that I did with Liam Edwards. <laughs> Liam was cast to be in Jurassic World Dominion at the very moment in the movie where Dr. Alan Grant, Dr. Ellie Sattler and Dr. Ian Malcolm were all on the screen for the first time since 1993. What made this opportunity extra special is that Wolfson College agreed for us to film on location in the auditorium sat in the very seats Liam was sat where Dr. Alan Grant and Dr. Sattler came into the room. So before we talk um, all things Jurassic, mm. I'm interested to find out how you got into being involved in film and TV in the first place. So it started really uh, with, my, with my family. Uh, my late uncle Michael, who passed away a couple of years ago, he, um, he'd done extra work for about 20 years. Um, could have even be longer. Um, but I've always come from a creative aspects of the family so my uncle Mike um, my auntie Lindsay she she um, they, they did you know Bond and you know Mission Impossibles and all that and I always grew up doing drama at school and theatre productions locally as well so when I came to uni it was a good part-time income um, doing uh, doing kind of extra work was a good income for, yeah. for me yeah. Uh, to pay for food and bills and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of how I got into it. And then, uh, yeah, I did my first ever film, which was 1917, right, okay. uh, World War One film. And then the rest is history Yeah. In, the, in that regard. Uh, so how do you actually, so for example, on that film, how did you even, do you apply or is it, um, do you audition? How does yeah. it actually work? So you apply, for, well, you don't apply for the role. The agency will put you forward for the role. Right. And then if then it goes to the assistant directors, you have like a first AD, a second AD, and a third AD. Right. And it's usually the first and second ADs who pick you. So they'll get told what the scene is by the director, and then they'll say they want this look, this height, this skin colour, this size, you know. And that's the yeah. one beauty of the film industry. You know, anyone can get involved because they yeah, want yeah. someone who's got... No arm, no leg, you know, <laughs> black ginger, white, yeah. you know, blonde, whatever. It, they want every aspect of that. Yeah. Um, so that's basically their kind of process. And then, yeah, you basically get picked and then yeah. go for your fittings and your COVID tests. Um, there's a lot, you know, before you even get on set you have to do. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of the process. So, yeah, agencies put you forward. If, it, if the production says, yep, then you're on. If right. not, then... Okay, so aside from Jurassic, can you name a few of the films and TV shows that you've been in that, that people might um, recognise? So probably The Crown. Um, well, a lot of the stuff actually hasn't, hasn't come out yet, but um, I've got the, the Crown Season 5, uh, The Flash coming out, right. Aquaman 2, um, what else have I done? Uh, 1917, Operation Mincemeat, I did that. Uh, the World War II film with Colin Firth. Um, Top Boy, if anyone's into Top Boy, the London gangster as an yeah. immigration officer in that. I, I basically, I kind of get casted for kind of military police roles. Right, okay. You know, it's that kind of generic look. Um, I can grow a moustache if need be, but I shaved it off specifically for this. Right, okay. Because uh, so that get, wouldn't be a good look, you know. Get into character. Yeah, you know, don't want the Freddie Mercury impersonator on here. But um, yeah, I've done, I've done quite a lot. And the best thing about it is I, I, I created an IMDb page just so I can remember what I've done. Because I've done quite a few projects yeah. now. It's so hard to remember when you're on the spot, so I can then have a look back and then... See what you've over. done. But yeah, I've done, I've done quite a lot of war stuff. Netflix, yeah. um, Apple TV, Slow Horses, I did that, Gary Oldman. Yeah, I've done loads of stuff. Really. Right, OK. Have you ever been a scientist or a, st or a student before? I've been a student recently in Boys in the Boat. That was directed by George Clooney. All oh, right, um, okay. So I've done that earlier in the year. So yeah, I get student... I did yeah, Mammals, an Amazon TV comedy show. Um, so student, I still get... Um, I'm, I'm very happy when production companies still think, yep, you just about pass as a student. I still, you know, I've got the few grey hairs coming through, but they still can put me forward <laughs> yeah, yeah. As, as, as a student, so I'll take that. But, um, yeah, so, yeah, I've done, you know, student role, but scientist role. No, this, this film we're going to talk about is the first ever yeah. one that I did. So, before um, getting involved in Dominion, were you a Jurassic Park fan? Massively. Um, I mean, for me... The, the Jurassic Park free film was, was the best. Um, I know it gets a lot of criticism, but I think, you know, the film's kind of solely based around kind of Sam Neill in that one. He was, you know, my kind of favourite character in, in the franchise. And, you know, growing up as a kid, those, those kind of dinosaurs involved, like I say, I could name every single dinosaur there. Um, I couldn't probably name all of them now, but that <laughs> film really stood out. And I think because mum and dad, they, they allowed me 
I was born in 97, obviously, and um, obviously 2001, the third one came out. So I remember watching that as a young kid, probably too young, but I was just, I loved dinosaurs, so I was engaged with it. Yeah. Um, of yeah, Jurassic Park was out in 93, Lost World was out in 97 when I was born. So yeah. that was kind of the first one that I saw, and yeah, I was a huge fan of, of, of that film. It's funny how, I mean, I'm a massive fan of Jurassic Park 3 as well, but to your point about when you were born, um, I was born um, in 1982, so I just got to, I was about 11 years old when mm -hmm. Jurassic Park came yeah. out. So obviously that had a, a big impact on me. Mm. And I think it's, you know, different people that I know that were born at different mm -hmm. times. You know, some people love The Lost World, for example, yeah. and even the mo more recent films, you know, 2015's mm. a few years ago now. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's generations of people that are, you know, are re that's their favourite film yeah. in the franchise. So, yeah, no, it, I, I love Jurassic Park 3. It's, it's, it's right a, it's up a there. It's a gem. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, how did you find out that you'd been chosen to appear in Dominion? So it was just a case of the agency reached out um, and they said, obviously, um, it was Arcadia, which was the code name, because films don't usually um, tell you what it is. They'll give you the code name, but you can usually Google it nine times out of ten and it'll come up with the result. They said they put me forward for the role. These were the dates in Oxford. Um, and obviously, this was just the start of the pandemic. It was the first film that was going to is basically got back up and running again during during COVID. Um, so such strict protocol in terms of fitting and um, and obviously COVID tests as well. And then yeah, I just got told uh, I was on it, and I was absolutely buzzing. Like I said they picked me as a role for a bison scientist, and obviously with the history of that as, in itself, I was like so overjoyed. Yeah, yeah. Um, and just you know, a little kid being part of this franchise, you know, yeah. it's it's incredible. So. So um, I'm just curious to know, you, you were told you were going to be a scientist um, from Biosyn and what the film was, sort of how long between uh, getting the initial correspondence, say, what was the code name, sorry? Arcadia. Arcadia, and then you had, what, a period of time that you knew you were going to be on this particular shoot? And, yeah. And then they tell you what you are, how soon is that before the actual f days of filming? So, so uh, with the Biosyn scientist, you don't actually find that out until I actually arrived. Right, okay. Um, I knew it was Jurassic World. Yeah. I mean, everyone knows that. Um, but it was, yeah, it was the eight COVID tests prior um, that everyone started to kind of talk to each other. It's kind of the first time you were put back in the public remit, but, yeah. you know, people were just stuck in their cars and it was kind of like you had to wave to the next person. You all knew what you was kind of part of, yeah. Um, yeah. but you couldn't really say hello to anyone. It was, kind of, it was a very weird odd experience, you know, wearing masks and everything was new then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of the time frame. But when you arrive, you, you then find out what your character is. Okay, and did you have to sign any sort of non-disclosure agreements or anything that's prohibited you from talking about the film or sharing photographs or anything yeah. like that? What sort of, what sort of um, I don't know, security, if the right, that's the right word, but what sort of um, protocol mm. is there around being involved in it yeah. um, before things have been released or before the films come out? Yeah, so the, the, you have uh, an NDA, which is a non-disclosure agreement, which you sign prior to, to filming. Um, and then it's basically, Every film production I've done on TV, some are quite lenient. If you're doing period dramas, yeah. it, historical films, like I filmed uh, recently Napoleon, a uh, Ridley Scott film coming out um, later this year, early next, and they're quite, well, actually, they did take our phones in because that was, that was a bit more, um, it's more the sets, really. They don't want the sets to be spoiled. You know the history of Napoleon, you know what it is, and, yeah. but it was kind of maybe the kind of, I don't know, endeavour which was yeah. filmed around Oxford, the kind of, which you know what they wore, you know, there's not so much tension behind the surprise. Where Jurassic World did take our phones in, you had to sign into security. Right. We had a guy called Paul Biddis, who was my military advisor in 1917. He was the security guy oh, to right. make sure we were wearing masks and had, handed our phones in on Jurassic World. So they wanted a big tough guy to basically right. put the pressure that you weren't going to take any pictures or anything. Um, so that's basically the kind of security remit around it. You know, it, would I be lying to you if I said that no one brings in a burner phone or tries to get a sneaky picture? You know, it probably does happen, but um, that it's very, you know, put it this way, you get fined a lot of money if you, it was, if you yeah, found I out that you, that you did leak something or, you know, and obviously the press are always around. We had paparazzi in the day we were here and yeah. they're trying to cover up Jeff and everyone. It was quite, and they're basically using the extras as kind of body bills. To the, you know, they don't mind sharing us around, but obviously yeah, Jeff, yeah. Sam and Laura down there, you know, they didn't want to yeah, yeah. see them. You can understand that. Which... It would make sense. Yeah, I guess so. So on the, um, so how many days filming uh, were you involved in? Uh, so it was two days filming. Okay. So we filmed two on the first day. Um, the base was just in the field behind. Right. Um, and then the second day was filmed in Jericho. 
um, another Oxford University building, so two days in total. Okay. Um, yeah, on the, on the first day, I, I got stung by a wasp just before, uh, just before <laughs> filming. So I thought I've gone through all this process of, first time I've ever been stung as well by a wasp. So right. through all this process of COVID and costume, and then I just changed this girl, we had our morning coffee, and then I was like, oh, I felt a prick on my hand. They put the gazebo under a wasp nest, which probably wasn't the best idea. <laughs> um, but my hand started to like balloon up a little bit. I was thinking, don't tell me I've waited all this time to be on a franchise like this. I've gone through every process fine. Yeah. It's like, it was like 5.30 in the morning, so call time was so early. And the, even the paramedics weren't there. They were arriving like 10, 15 minutes after that. That's useful. Which, you know, when the AD was like, oh, my, Liam, come with me quickly, come with me quickly. Yeah. Um, but no, it was fine. Well, my hand wasn't so bad. It was a little bit itchy all day. But... Yeah, I suppose it's better than on the base somewhere or something oh, like yes. that. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. But they would have been like, no, Liam, we can't have you, we can't have you on. And I'd be like, brilliant. What's you know? an AD, if you don't mind me asking? So they're the assistant directors. So right, okay. you have like a first AD, second AD, third AD. Um, the third ADs are kind of the ones who deal with us. Um, second ADs they'll probably work more with the first AD to position people. Yeah. And then the first AD is the one under Colin who will work with Colin. So Colin will be like, yeah, I want these extras to do this. And then yeah. he'll shout the message out. Yeah. And then the second AD will then process that. And then the first, so it's kind of like a working rank. And then with the assistant director, they work their way up in the industry, right. basically with the more experience they've, yeah. they've done. Um, so that's basically an AD. All yeah. oh, right, okay. So on the day itself, uh, on the first day when you were here, yeah. Um, what, how did the day unfold um, from obviously getting stung by a wasp? Yeah, it's brilliant, I know. Um, <laughs> you know, from when you arrived, take me through the sort of the, the process. Yeah, so we, um, I stayed at my friend uh, Archie's house because my, because I studied at Oxford Brooks here. Yeah. My lease, my other house um, ended because of COVID, we kind of cut it short, the contract. So my friend Archie still had his house. So I stayed around there and uh, his other university student friends will dance the night away. So when I'm trying to get to sleep early, I had yeah. to be up four o'clock in the morning the next, you know, next yeah. day. I was like, oh God, so then I was up. And then basically, yeah, I just walked from the house in Headington all the way to, um, to, to here. Um, it was, I think a couple of days ago, I got a taxi. Come on in, um, then you just go through your COVID. You have, a, have to do a COVID test on arrival. Then you get sent into your pod, you get breakfast, you know, drink, and yeah. we was all kind of in our separate tables though. It, it's, it's every element, even you've had eight COVID tests prior. Yeah. It was still like, you sit over there, you sit there. So quite different to other sets that you've been on before the pandemic. Right? Oh, you could hug and, you know, chuck each other around and go for pints after, or, you know, right. you, you get a community feel there. Um, and then it just, just changed. It was like such a strict regime. But at the start, you were quite nervous. You didn't want to fall out of place, you know, especially with masks, you know. Yeah. At the time went on, I think people were like, oh, to wear a mask anymore but at the start it was so yeah strict and then straight into fitting costume so um yeah i had uh had the um this is also something i had in the video this shirt i'm wearing is actually the shirt i wore right in the production usually after a film you give your costume back but on the day of arriving i brought back the exact like similar same shirt right i've had like a i don't know 13 hour day i'm so tired come back and i've just not Put the, I've just not put the shirt back. So basically, I've got back to my shooting house and I was like, hmm, whose shirt's this? And I was like, and then I realised I've just walked out with, with the proper the thing. So my mum was like, this is a nice shirt, you know, for a yeah. sight. Just don't tell production about it. Yeah, um, yeah. So they didn't come chasing. They might come after me now. But um, yeah. yeah, no, it was, uh, it was a Reese a Reese, uh, Reese shirt. So it was probably quite expensive. But, right, okay, nice. Yeah, yeah. so I, get to, I, I kept the shirt and um, yeah, then they give me like a, on the second day, it was like a bison white lab science yeah. coat. The first day was kind of like a, a jacket. Um, and then uh, and then you just wait around. We, didn't, we waited around the first day until about three o'clock in the afternoon right, before okay. we started filming. So, so quite an early start and then I a long way. I was there at five in the morning and then we yeah. didn't get here until about three in the afternoon. So um, when we get to say, you said about three o'clock, yeah. um, what, what happens then? Are you already in the auditorium or? Yeah, so we get placed and sat. Um, and then it's, we give a shout out to my friend Anna and Chris. They're, uh, they're both siblings, but I didn't know them at the time then. We um, became friends on another production called Masters of the Air. Um, and when this came out in the cinema, they were like sat there. Right. So, and then I was like, Chris, Anna, was you in the same scene as I am? And they were like, yeah, that was us. Uh, so that was just weird, pure coincidence. It's yeah, like, yeah. especially down in the South, you know, nine times out of 10, you will meet, you know, fellow extras yeah. and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, we get sat down, Colin Trevorrow was there, then obviously get the surprise where you see, you didn't see him at the time, but Dr. Ian Malcolm's chair was over. You knew that probably Jeff Goldblum was in and around um, 
the area. So up until that point, you didn't know that he was necessarily in the scene? You don't know what the scene is. They, they don't, they'll only brief you until, so they put you in and then they'll brief you the right, scene. Right, okay. So you have right. no idea what you're doing. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, that was, the, that was the start of that. Right, okay. So who, who gives to you the information about the scene? Who's, who's going to be in the scene? And is that, does that come from Colin? Or? So the, Colin would, gave like an introduction speech. Yeah. And then he said, so this will, I'll go a bit more into the actual scene itself. Obviously, um, Jeff Goldblum, Ian Malcolm, he gets introduced and obviously we're all like, wow, I see him, he's in the black you yeah. know, jacket, the leather jacket, glasses on. It was like so surreal, you know, literally I was sitting here and I was seeing that on the stage. That um, would have been so, such a strange, exciting ooh. and strange thing. To, you know, yeah. uh, young Liam, like I say, was just like jumping for joy. It's like, yeah. this is someone who I've, I've grown up with. Yeah. You know, I never think I'd be in a situation like this in my life. But anyway, we're here, we're there. And then basically, I will give credit to, to Jeff because he had like about a 10 minute dialogue. I know in the film it is can, it's probably a lot smaller. Right. Um, but he just learned, he knew his lines so yeah. well. For, an, you know, for anyone, for any of us to be in front of a whole room of people, film work, and deliver lines for 10 minutes long, yeah. have that same infusion and, and know where to start again. It's incredible to watch just as someone who admires film and, and everything like that. Yeah. And then obviously he gives the whole dialogue. And then obviously this is the point where um, Sam and Laura Dern Sam Neill and Laura Dern are here. And obviously in the first scene, I was, I was sat behind there. Yeah. And this was actually deliberately, Colin Trevorrow wanted the surprise element right. for our faces. We didn't think they were here. Some rumors going, oh, they weren't here this day. And then obviously I'm sat right behind here. Yeah. Out comes out that fire exit door. And, um, and, that, and it was the two of them with Mamadou as well. Yeah. Um, Sam and Laura Dern. And I just, and I, my face was just, Pure shock. I mean, I th I'm probably that's the same face for everyone when we turn back to look at Jeff and they got all our faces were like, yeah, God, like, you know, you've got real, you know, method acting you like sandwiched between legends of the franchise. I was in Madame Two Swords for a moment. You know, Sam had his hat on. Yeah, it was just so surreal. Um, and then Colin was like, um, good afternoon. So see Sam, Laura, you might you might know those guys. You may not like, you know, I was like, <laughs> yeah, I think we know who they are. Yeah, yeah. there's probably one person who's never watched the Jurassic films, you know, yeah. I was slightly from. Um, but yeah, so I was just, it was just like so shocked. And then it came to the point where they wanted to do close-ups on the audience and the assistant director was like, I really like your nodding. Like, can you move one across? So I said, also I said to you earlier in the first bit, looking yeah. over Jeff's uh, shoulder, you'll see me on the top row. Yeah. And then when I stand up and go, my woohoo, like, you know, that was, that was here, this yeah, was in yeah. this row. Yeah. And I didn't realize that, that was kind of a close-up. I knew they would have the camera this way yeah. on Sam and Laura, but I didn't know you know, you never know if anything's going to be cut, where it's going to be positioned. Yeah. Then obviously you can hear the, the audio of me going, woohoo, yeah, it's great. And I was just like, it was so surreal. So when I saw it in the cinema, yeah. I was just like, oh, it's yeah. pretty awesome. <laughs> like, yeah. I suppose, actually thinking about it, obviously they, um, take, they capture more film than they use in the film, probably in all productions, I would oh, imagine. Yeah. I mean, um, it's, it, you know, people just think a two minute scene on a film, that yeah. would take a whole day, if not two. Yeah. Because you know, they're yeah. doing a take from here, you know, their camera's up here, yeah. camera over Jeff's shoulder, camera's coming down. Yeah. Um, so you don't even know necessarily, even after the day of shooting, that your bit is going to, uh, yeah. you know, be in the film yeah. itself. So you could tell everyone. That's what. That's the one rule I do. I'd say to people. I don't say usually what yeah. productions I'm in because nine times out of ten you just don't know if you're going to be yeah. seen in it. And to yeah. be fair, I didn't really think I would be seeing this. I thought we'd probably be kind of blurred people, and Jeff would be focused on Jeff, and you yeah. know what the scene was, but. Yeah. And obviously yeah. got picked up and I was like, there we go. Okay. I'm in the Jurassic history. That's you know, fantastic. I was like, yeah, I was so overjoyed. So on so. the day, it's on this particular day, did you get to interact at all with um, any of the, the cast? So Sam, look, they weren't, it was such quick turnaround with them. Yeah. You didn't really speak to them. Jeff was, was great. I mean, he was coming up to all of us, shaking our hands. He came up to me and was like, you know, he's quite a tall, slender man. He's so he tall, what yeah. his character is. He's so what he is in real life. Yeah. You know, you, you always get those actors who are just such a fake to what they really are. But he was just so authentic and real. And he was coming up to us he's like, you know, where can I get a drink around here? You know, I was like, well, I said, what kind of drink are you after? He said, I don't know, if, uh, probably a coffee at this time of the morning. You know, it's like, yeah. it like, but it's probably the worst Jeff Goldblum is brushed never. But um, <laughs> yeah, uh, it was just, it was just witty little comments like that. And you know, he, he was just such a joy and. Yeah. You know, especially when doing long days and stuff, he, 
He's a man who's got energy, you know, yeah. he's aged now. I mean, what's yeah. he, how old is he now? Like 70s, 60s, 70s? He's got to be, yeah, he's got to be up, up there. You know. I think it, probably in his, uh, I don't know, actually. I think he's in his late 60s, in late early 60s. 70s. So, I mean, yeah. I, he's always struck me as someone that's, his character of Dr. Malcolm is very much like him. Like he oh, is. Yeah. You know, you see him the, doing stuff on Instagram or something yeah. like that. and He comes across like the same person almost. There isn't, um, you know, I've been lucky to see many actors over, over the years I've been doing this. And I'd say Jeff is, uh, there isn't much acting involved. It literally yeah. is him. Yeah. He is Dr. Ian Malcolm. Um, yeah, he was just a joy to be around. Such a, you know, joyful person. He was just so calm when he needed to be. You know, yeah. you get some actors and they're so aggressive and they're t how they want, you know. Telling the extras, oh, shut up, be quiet, we're trying to film this. Really? Like, yeah, you get that sometimes. Right, okay. Um, well, I've had that quite a lot in the past, but he was, and Colin and Jeff, they were such nice people. Yeah. You know, there's nothing better being on a nice production. It just makes the time nicer as well. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's happier. So after that, after you've finished up here for the day, what do are you told, do you already know you're doing two days of, of so shooting? So the following day, we did, once again, we didn't know what the scene was or where we were going to be, but I know quite a lot of people got released. Um, so I think, on this day, there was probably about, I don't know, let's say 100. Yeah. Um, and then for the scene in the Bison Lab, there was probably about 50, so they halved it down. Right, OK. Um, but once again, that could have been me, that could have been anyone. I don't know who yeah. picks that. Um, and then obviously, yeah, the next day was the, the evacuation scene Yeah. Uh, that we did in the, the Bison Lab. Um, and that was, that was pretty cool. It, the funniest part about that, that scene was the, I didn't realise until later, was the guy who's doing the coffee. You remember the coffee scene? Yeah. The yeah. barista. Yeah. He, is, he does the Ribena adverts. I don't know if you recognise him. Off the, I that's, do. It's weird. That's the weird thing. I've, ben Ashton. And does then, he play Colin in the advert in the Ribena? Yeah, advert, he's, he's got like the, he's got the glasses and the hat. The enthusiast, like he's talking about that's fine it. wine. Yeah, that's it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I didn't know this, but me and Ben actually spoke on Twitter about six, seven years ago. I think I ended up following. I think I tweeted him. I didn't know who he was or anything. Yeah. And I realised until the film came out that actually, I've actually got his number. Right. It was a bizarre thing on my WhatsApp. I don't know how this is weird how yeah, things yeah. all aligned together. But yeah, Ben, ben Ashton. Right, like okay. He uh, is the barista. So I recognised him on the day. And then obviously that was the scene they do the coffee scene and the evacuation scene, which yeah. Yeah. Yeah, was pretty awesome. When you finished day one, mm. uh, how did you find out that you were going to be on day two? So we basically get a call sheet from the agency um, the, the evening of the first day to see if we're on to the next stage um and then obviously found out that well it came in the next day same holding area and they drove us to the set in jericho which was the um it's the university building of oxford i think they do business and politics there spinny spinny glass building is how i describe it it's a yeah. beautiful building um and then obviously that's where i met uh, ben ashton who yeah. obviously coffee guy coffee barista guy who did the ribena advert and uh, everything like that so it's quite funny and obviously the history um behind knowing Ben. I knew him about five, six years prior to yeah. Ashby on set, and obviously um, I find out I had his phone number as well. Then he's in front of me at the dressing post. It's very weird. But um, yeah, so found out, and then obviously you get told what the scene was, and that included uh, the evacuation scene, and then a lot of dialogue between Jeff, Sam, and Laura. Um, and then, yeah, kind of got the ball rolling on that front. So on the coffee scene, um, are you, not necessarily that you did appearing in the shot at that moment, but are you in and around the filming of that? Yes. How does that, how did that work? So we were all blurred at the background. I can see me walking up the twirly staircase that they had. I knew it yeah. was me, but if that was the only frame shot of me in it, yeah. no one would know if it was me. Um, it's just, I can know my walk from a mile off. Um, so I, I was in that scene. It was the evacuation scene that was the most fun part because they said, right, Colin was like, right guys, we need all the energy now because this is the last final shot of the, shot of the day. Yeah. And then we can get out of here. And um, basically they had the first lot running up the, the staircase. And then there's the scene where this is where the camera comes across onto Mamadou yep. and we're all running up. So first take goes and they said, right, half of you extras go that way, half run up the stairs. And I'm, as I'm about to run, I've got my science lab coat on, ready to run up quickly as we possibly can. And we start, it's right, action. And we're all running at fast speed. Then I catch my uh, coat on the uh, hand rail. Right. Well, and this girl behind me, obviously she's pulling herself up and then my jacket's here. <laughs> And obviously, I, she's gone to grab, and then I've gone this way, but then flung back the other way, and caused it like a domino effect, basically down the staircase. And all I hear is just cut. And when you know you're the main man yeah. responsible for all of that, it's a little bit of hiding. And um, <laughs> luckily, no one's injured in, in that process, but it did cause a bit of laughter. Yeah. Um, and then we did a retake, and then it was fine. But 
the second take, I didn't realise how quickly the, the camera is basically on like a long pole. Right. And then it basically swings round, and then obviously it goes on the close up of, of Mamadou, and we're all there. And but obviously I'm about six foot one, so I was running up there, and the camera probably at one point was I'm here, and the camera was probably like there. Right. Okay. So it was like thin margin between hitting my head or not. I had to, I saw it last minute and kind of just like ducked. Right. Okay. Down. So I was like, oh my. So nearly caused a domino effect and killed a load of people. Then I nearly got knocked out by the camera. You're right. Okay. Third take was the best take ever, and Colin was like, all right, we got the shot, and then that was that. So. There was a little bit of life and limb uh, in that shot, but we survived. Yeah. And it's quite interesting, obviously, the CGI, obviously, on the glass window, because obviously it's just normal, it's in Oxford, yeah. it's just normal building in the back. Yeah. They've CGI'd all that, and they had massive orange beamed lights, which obviously then they edit that and put yeah. the whole scene in the background. So it is, it's really cool to see something you've been involved in the building. Yeah. And then you see what they do with the CGI, it's pretty yeah. awesome. So, where, so presumably then, the, there's, is it quite a large crew of camera people, sound people, lighting, or is it is it a small setup? No, it's, I mean, especially on films like that, you'll have hundreds of people. Really? Working, yeah. I mean, we had, I mean, paparazzi were trying to take pictures of us stood outside. I mean, we weren't just science lab coats. Yeah. But security were getting quite annoyed at that, and they were got they? a bit feisty sometimes. Paparazzi don't care, they just take pictures of anything. Right, okay. Security was like, you cannot film it, you cannot film it. Right, okay. Um, so I'll take photos. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of like, how the day goes really and yeah it's quite a, it was quite a quick day yeah you know, the, sec the second day but there's, there's hundreds behind the scenes security fitting catering you know grip control yeah camera guys like it's, it's massive so you didn't manage to get away with the, the lab coat on day two then sadly not no the white lab coat was very uh very yeah. much seen by uh, if i walked out of my lab coat they might be like Lee, is that your is that, did you bring that yourself i was like yeah no unfortunately not yeah yeah Back, so, back, I forget so Mamadou's and uh, well Ramsey's a new character to the franchise. Yeah. Did you did you get to speak to him at all? I mean, you had you were pretty close in that sequence when yeah. you were escaping up the stairs. Yeah, he was he was he was really nice. I think actors who come into franchises this big who aren't that known, you know, they kind of have this kind of repetition that they're quite full of themselves and they're not. But he was actually a really pleasant, nice man. Um, yeah. You know, he's very happy to be there. I think that's when you speak to most people, they're just happy to be involved. You know, in whatever yeah. small little role they might play or a big role. Um, you know, that it's, they're, just, they're just happy to be involved. So he's really polite, nice to speak to. Um, yeah. yeah. So generally speaking, it was a good vibe around the whole filming. and. Yeah, it, I think everyone there was just like, they knew what the film was as a Jurassic franchise. They knew the kind of the finale, especially yeah. in, the, in the Jurassic World sagas. So they wanted to end it well. So when you finished up on day two mm. of filming, um, what happens then between that moment and the film coming out? Is there any interaction with yourself or is it just the release date that comes it, along? It's literally as a fan. So when you find out about it, I find out about it. There's no kind of inside knowledge or anything um, apart from what you see on the day. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but then obviously you can't always know what that is being filmed, how that's going to tie up with the rest of the film. So it's completely, you're kind of oblivious to that. Um, and obviously the first time I saw any news of it was when the, I think the poster came out the year before. Yeah. So obviously it got delayed by a year. Um, and then that's where I started to get excited. But even like a year, if it was like, felt like a lifetime ago, I was in my halls in, in uni, just started to get back into uni after the pandemic was still a bit yeah. frisky. Um, but so yeah, that's how I found out. On that and, stage. and did you get a, a copy of the script or any notes or anything like that? on the day or are you just literally verbally directed to literally the and any if we do get dialogue or anything like that you just learn that on the day right you know, okay. there is no you know sometimes extras are as the far deep background possibly can be or you could bag yourself a featured role right, you know okay. there's no there's no in between so yeah we didn't yeah i'm happy with my shirt memorabilia yeah, that's, that's like. a really cool <laughs> thing actually to be honest fashion wise as well but yeah yeah, yeah at least you know, it wasn't like i don't know hawaii wasn't a primark shirt you know yeah. something like that yeah yeah <laughs> Brilliant. Well, Liam, thanks ever so much. Really, really pleasure. enjoyed speaking to you. It's been fascinating finding out about just the movie business in general yeah. and in particular, you know, Jurassic Park. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Jurassic World Dominion. And um, the fact that you got to be on film with the big three mm. after, you know, what, 29 years now mm. since we've seen Dr. Grant, Ellie Sattler mm -hmm. and, and Malcolm all mm. on, the, yeah. on the screen together. And you were there for that very moment. Yeah. A huge thank you to Liam Edwards for taking the time to talk to me about his time on Dominion. You can find Liam at Mr. Liam Edwards underscore. I'd also like to thank Wolfson College for allowing us to film at the college in Oxford. You can find them at Wolfson College, Oxford. Before I go, 
I just wanted to take this opportunity to let you know about a couple of other things I'm going to be doing on the Jurassic Park podcast in the coming months. First of all, I'm working on a new segment called Jurassic Obsession. In this episode, I'm going to be talking to community members about their love of Jurassic Park and more specifically about their collections and how they got into collecting, what they specialise in collecting and how they go about finding the things that they're after. In addition to that, we're also going to be bringing back the Jurassic Park book club. We're going to be reviewing The Evolution of Claire. haven't read this book yet, but I'm looking forward to getting into it. Interesting to see how we can possibly go from Jurassic Park 3 into Jurassic World. Those announcements will be up on the Jurassic Park podcast Twitter, Instagram feeds, so look out for those dates coming up. Thank you. So this is where they filmed the Bison Lab evacuation scene, which is obviously meant to be in Italy. Um, so if I show you around here, this is where we did the evacuation scene running up the stairs with uh, the camera panning on Mamadou. Um, obviously this was quite a funny scene because this is where I spoke earlier in the interview, I decided to stack it on the first take. Um, and then if we move in closer, it's very different now, there's a University of Oxford event going on here. This is where they had the uh, coffee scene with Jeff Goldblum, Sam and Will Dern, and they had all this bias in the lab. Uh, logos all around the building and across the windows just to our right here was where they put the massive orange lights which just looked like a car park and where that was the uh, CGI uh, obviously, obviously the whole place was burning alive all the dinosaurs had to evacuate into a safe camp and this is where we filmed it the day here, uh, here in Oxford very different now and I would also like to thank my lovely daughter Maisie for filming and editing this episode. I literally couldn't have done it without her.